cool with the, uh, I hope everyone's managing to stay cool with the extended heat we're going to be having this week. I just saw on the weather forecast. Uh, please stay safe, everybody, and stay hydrated. And uh, as long as we're talking about water, uh, being hydrated, let's talk about uh, water runoff and how we uh, help to clean up our streams and our rivers. All right. How's that for a segue? <laughs> it was beautiful. Couldn't have scripted it any better. And even your plug on the temperatures is also a, a great intro. So thank you. Thank you. I'm Colin Bell. I'm with the city in our division of green infrastructure. And I'm just going to tell you all a little bit about the program, and then I'll hand it over to Clark from the project team at Stream to get into some details. So, yeah, Colin Bell, I'm with the Division of Green Infrastructure. We are a group within DOTI, the Department of Transportation and Infrastructure. And we plan, design, build, and maintain this thing, green infrastructure, which I will describe, but not yet. Um, so we're with this stuff from cradle to grave. And you can see here in this picture, it's a cross section that's supposed to kind of represent Denver and you see people working and driving and living. Um, but there are these consequences to all that activity. You see a man applying fertilizer, you see trucks releasing uh, pollution, you see pets and potentially have pet waste and trash trucks. So these are all things that just happen throughout our city that tend to deposit something on the streets or on the lawn like fertilizer. And then when it rained, all that stuff, all that pollution washes into the street. It washes down the curb line. It goes into a storm sewer and eventually to, um, you know, the nearest waterway or a bunch of waterways and water bodies. So this is a world, you know, this graphic is one without green infrastructure. So enter us, Division of Green Infrastructure. And what it is, is it's living infrastructure. So that's the green part, things that are alive, that uses vegetation, soil, and natural processes to manage all that pollution that's washing down the street and into our pipes when it rains. And we try to treat that dirty water uh, with green infrastructure and create a healthier, cooler, and hopefully, you know, nicer urban environment. Kid advance, Clark. Thank you. So along the bottom are some photos of past green infrastructure projects in Denver. Uh, the one on the left and the one in the middle is what we call a site scale green infrastructure. It's smaller, it's right along, it's right on the street. And so when it rains, water flows down the curb as it tends to, but instead of going into some kind of inlet and into the storm underground, first it passes through this vegetated area with plants and soils and the plants and soils absorb that pollution. Um, and if it's trash or something like that, we come and clean it out and we'll manage the vegetation and keep it looking healthy and nice. And on the right, uh, the lower right is a picture of one of our regional green infrastructure facilities. So it kind of does the same thing. Dirty stormwater comes in and we use plants and soil to pull the pollution out, only it's at a much bigger scale. This is like <clears throat> you know, several acres and it, it gets water from a big pipe and it fills with water. It becomes like a lake when it rains. So all these different scales of green infrastructure all kind of doing the same thing. The primary function is to pull that pollution out of the stormwater. But through our projects, we try to accomplish a lot more, more than just this stormwater quality improvement. We try to plant as many trees as we can, especially along the street to encourage people well, to create a nicer environment, but also cool our streets to encourage people to walk more, bike more, make it more comfortable to take the bus. Um, we try to make our facilities beautiful and attractive, a place that you might want to be around. Um, and then with trees and vegetation, we try to improve the ecological quality of a neighborhood, maybe provide pollinator habitat, habitat improve air quality. Um, yeah, a bunch of things, all things that trees and uh, green infrastructure provide. And so that's what we do in general. And I guess Clark is gonna talk about Lowell and Evans and how it is a great, great opportunity for us to meet these sort of goals. Thank you, Colin. Um, so in case you're not just as intimately familiar with the site, um, here's a quick map to show you where this uh, lies. 
pretty much adjacent to South Lowell Boulevard, which is this diagonal road coming in, and then bordered by West Evans on the north and West Warren Avenue on the south. And this triangle piece is really the main area of the project. Um, some things exactly like Colin was talking about that we think this is a great spot for is right now it's a big piece of pavement, which means it's hot, water runs off, and without curving gutter, um, cars and vehicles really don't have visual or physical barriers to know where to go and not go, um, leading to unsafe conditions for pedestrians. Um, so that, um, coupled with being able to reduce that runoff, provide green space to soak up some of those pollutants, makes this a really great candidate of a spot. Um, this is just an image to really, really show how much pavement is out there. Um, and then one thing I do want to point out is that the water that we're capturing from this site is a little bit along Warren, which you can see going left to right on your screen in the background, but then a lot of it's coming from down um, Lowell Evans to the south running north here. Um, so this project is not the first time this was around. In 2018, there was a study done uh, for this exact purpose. Uh, but because of cost due to a sanitary line that runs through the middle of the site, uh, this project was shelved and then picked back up in its current uh, form. A couple major things I'll point out about this version of the plan. Um, again, this is Warren on the left and Lowell um, diagonally coming in. The main water quality area is this green space with the concentric rings here. Uh, water's entering from up here in this blue space, calling that the inland, the four bay. Um, and then there's a small public seating area on the south side of the site. And then the upper right is just a perspective rendering of what this design would have looked like. And what you see on your screen now is where the plan is at currently. <clears throat> so I'll start by covering just a couple of roadway things. Uh, then move on to the water quality area and then cover the pedestrian experience. Uh, so on the roadway, you'll see the actual drive lane and bike lane are in a similar condition to what's existing between a, a left turn lane here at the intersection, a 11 foot drive lane that's northbound along South Lowell. And then we're adding a little bit more space to the bike lane here that's going to be the closest to the water quality facility. Uh, there will be street parking along Warren and then parallel parking uh, closer to the Evans intersection uh, right here on the right side of your screen. Uh, so that water is coming from the upper left of the screen by these two blue arrows and coming into the site through this main inlet and four bay where my mouse is hovering. Um, as it gets in there, hopefully that's where some of the sediment drops out before it gets into the landscaped areas. The water then enters a landscape bed and goes over these um, cascading rings that we call weir walls, moves all the way down to this outlet structure here. Uh, so that outlet structure, once it reaches that point, will go into the storm system. So that water does not go back out into the street. Um, it's shown as blue in the water quality area, just to hopefully illustrate where that water is going to be. But on the day to day, this will be dry. Um, after rainfall events, that's when you're going to see water in these facilities. But within 24 to 36 hours, uh, that water will be either infiltrated into the ground or into the storm system. The one other thing I want to point out regarding um, the drainage is that just to make sure none of these flows uh, start to go on to these residents' properties right over here, there's another drain provided here to catch anything um, that might just come off the sidewalk. Uh, the water in the actual water quality area is contained by a berm uh, just above the sidewalk here where my mouse is pointing. The one big change for pedestrian experience from the 2018 plan is that by pulling that sidewalk that went right along parallel to Lowell, 
uh, away from there. It provides a little bit more space for water quality, but also a much more comfortable pedestrian experience uh, with a lot more removal from the busy uh, Lowell Boulevard. And that's now along this east side here. Uh, you'll notice the CD node is still in its location uh, as in the previous study with two benches that are oriented towards the nice views down the water quality area. And then down here, just due to um, some stakeholder concerns about safety, these parallel parking spots got pulled a little closer to where their existing alignment is um, in its existing condition today. And then on this corner, uh, a bump out was added, which just provides a little bit more space between the curb ramp and the sidewalk to allow pedestrians to more safely navigate that corner, as well as hopefully provide that additional visual and physical barrier to the vehicular traffic coming down uh, Lowell. Uh, and then here we have a perspective rendering. Sometimes it's not always the easiest to understand exactly what's going on in all these plans. So perspective graphics really help um, help really understand what's going on with the site. Uh, this view is looking similar to the existing condition view we looked at before, where you're looking up, looking south up Lowell. Uh, and so just to reorient you, I'll go over the street again, the water quality area, and planting, and then pedestrians. Uh, here you have the north and southbound drive lane of Lowell, followed by the bike lane here. In this back right corner, you'll see this little gray area. That's where the water's entering as it's coming down Lowell. It'll come down and enter this first landscaped area, and then it'll cascade down these weir walls, these concrete walls, all the way down to here, hopefully infiltrating uh, and allowing the water to slow down before it enters this little drain and goes into the storm system. Uh, this planting over here is really situated along that berm. And that berm is making sure that that water stays in this water quality area, as well as protects the sanitary line that um, remains on site, just buried very deeply. Uh, a lot of the planting here, a lot of the grasses and shrubs we're using are all native species with just a few ornamentals sprinkled around to truly, really, really try and highlight um, some really nice aesthetics like these uh, pinks and, and white fluffy ornamental grasses that really add for a, a better experience. Uh, up here in the far side of the screen where the people are sitting, that's where the two benches are looking down over the water quality area. Uh, pedestrians would come along that backside and then down the sidewalk you see on the left to get to Lowell or vice versa if you're trying to get to Warren. And then this area here, the concrete space you see here is actually provided um, just for an access point to that sanitary manhole uh, that I was talking about where the sanitary line runs here. Uh, as you can see, this is providing a lot more green space, hopefully a lot more space for the water to infiltrate um, into that and be caught on site and hopefully provide a lot of benefit to not only pedestrians, but lead to safer streets as well. Um, just to try and orient you all to where we are in this process, we're at the public meeting today, which means we've gone through a lot of concept development and stakeholder outreach prior to this. Um, the final design is slated for the end of this year, 2024, with construction beginning um, fall 2025. That should say spring 2025. Apologies on that. Uh, with that, um, Colin, Paul, did I miss any major points? Um, if so, chime in. Otherwise, I think we can open it up for questions or comments. I think you got all the big points there, Clark. There, there were a few that came in on the chat that <laughs> I just couldn't help myself but respond to. So I might, <clears throat> I guess, vocalize a couple of those just so everyone knows. So there was a question about how many trees. Uh, I think there's 13 in the plans currently. Um, 
Yeah, I did a quick count. <laughs> so <laughs> hopefully that's right. There was a comment about, you know, the the right turn behaviors of the vehicles going up Lowell onto Evans and the bump out there, it it will impact the ability to kind of just sneak around and, and jet around the corner. And, you know, at Dottie, we view that as a, a good thing, making it safer for the people who are trying to cross the street there. I know there's a bus stop. So that is a, a potential outcome. Uh, another question about watering and we'll put a permanent irrigation system in and we will use that to keep the plants alive, definitely water them through establishment and then hopefully turn it down. But if it just keeps getting hotter and drier, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if we'll be able to turn it off, but we do use uh, mostly water smart plants as much as we can. And, you know, the trees are a little thirstier, but um, we'll have permanent irrigation. There's, oh, um, Lyric raised her hand. Yeah, sorry. I was actually the one that asked about the uh, watering. And I do have a follow-up question to that because looking at this picture, I see um, what looks like some vegetation on this little bump out right at the corner. Um, and wondering if, if that is, um, is the city going to be maintaining that as well? It's not going to be the responsibility of the homeowner, right? That's correct. Yeah. All, all the green we would intend to maintain. And I guess much of the gray, but yes, all the plants as well. All the plants. Nora, you're muted if you're... Oh, sorry. Uh, Rosario and Amelia, if you want to unmute yourselves and ask your question. Yeah, hey. Hey everyone. Hello. Yeah, hey everyone. Thanks for being here. And our internet connection is a little spotty, so pardon any any breakups. Um, if we need to, we'll just ask in the chat. Um, yeah, we really appreciate the the rework of the parallel parking spaces um, and also the 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 bump out the improvement to the crosswalk um, for yeah that improved safety and visibility is great. Um, I have a couple questions and then my mom has a couple questions. Um, so I'm wondering about um, any security features like cameras or additional lighting or like motion, you know, any motion censored kind of stuff, um, but I guess more particularly any security features. Um, and then any, um, if there will be trash and recycling bins provided, um, because where there are benches, there will be people drinking and eating things. Um, walking dogs. Yeah, walking dogs, exactly. Um, and then uh, this is more for me, this is more of like a long term kind of maintenance question, um, or I guess just long term planning of uh, just to make sure that my mom has a a parking space reserved so that when she comes and goes, she doesn't come home and find that she can't park in front by her own house. So if we could have like at least one of those par parallel parking spaces just be resident, you know, reserved for resident parking only. Um, so yeah, those are my three questions and we can either, you, you can answer that or, and then, or we can, or we can wait for my mom to ask and then you can answer them all at once. I think maybe let's tackle those just uh, so we can keep. Yeah, I'll just them jump in. Yeah. You guys. Oh, sure. Sorry. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. Good. Go ahead. Um, Sam and Colin, chime in. Absolutely. Um, I we are not currently have any security features or motion sensors. I think the only lighting would just be the street lighting provided currently. Um, so we would not be adding to that. Uh, I think the the thought of a, a trash can is a, is a good idea, and I, I think we will definitely look into that to see its feasibility along, especially that um, front along Warren Avenue there. Um, those two. And then regarding the street parking, I know uh, Sam Pavone, our DOT PM, looked into that, and we, we tried to see if that was feasible, and that was... Uh, I, I believe that was not feasible. Colin and Sam, correct me if I'm wrong on that. Did I, was there another question there that I missed? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, we have. 
I, I just wanted to talk about the parking issue and, and that you know. Hey like, Sam, you're you're a little quiet. Um, okay. I don't know what to do about that. I can hear him. Maybe just speak up a little bit. Sam. Okay. I'll try and speak a little louder. That's great. Um, yeah, I, I did uh, look into that, and um, essentially I was told uh, that they cannot, um, how do you want to say, permit uh, particular parking spots to residents. So, you know, essentially, you know, this parking spot, the, or these three or two that we have, um, you know, they're going to be accessible um, to, to anyone that that's driving there and wants to park there. It's just like any other on-street parking. Okay. Um, yeah, so thank you for looking into that. Um, I don't know if you've had a chance to drive through that, you know, through, through uh, the Lowell Street side, but uh, it really is used as an overflow parking by a lot of the neighbors. I mean, right now there's like two flatbed trucks parked, you know, next to the house. And so um, that's probably going to be an ongoing headache for us because, you know, that's that's just the nature of, of, that na of the neighborhood here. Um, as far as lights um, along the division, you know, uh, between my back, yard and the people who live behind us on Warren, there is a light along that uh, sidewalk that is extremely useful because, you know, that that entire space is so big that um, the usual light that would come from the intersection at uh, Lowell and Evans is not, mm -hmm. it's not very bright. And, um, and having that, you know, that light post there uh, really makes a difference to discourage, um, you know, illegal activity or people, you know, up to any mischief. So it would be great if we, if that light is not removed, if it continues to be maintained. Um, and uh, as far as the sewer line, right now, the, you know, the, the sewer line, because we don't have an alley, so it runs along the property lines, like behind, mm -hmm. behind my house and the, and, and the neighbors. Um, yeah, that's, that's where the, you know, the city, people have to come in like whenever like our pipes bust or whatever so is that going to stay the same yeah that's gonna remain. oh that's gonna remain okay yeah. okay i just wanted to make sure snow, yeah. Yeah. uh yeah and as far as snow removal uh i just need to know what to prepare for so right now i do all the snow all the shoveling along lowell and along evans and so i was wondering what my responsibility will be in terms of re removing snow um, under the new configuration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you at the only, moment, yeah, exactly. Like, would we only, okay. go ahead. Yep, just, sorry, I drew a little past the line, but yeah, it would just be this. Okay. Um, everything to the, the west of this would be city's responsibility. Great, okay. Okay, and uh, one other question. So I see the sidewalk that's running parallel to the properties. Um, but then you know how uh, there that little walkway goes to uh, you know like towards the bike lane. Is there a sidewalk or anything along Akimira? Yeah, it's like a curb. I think like a uh, yeah, it just goes to a curb that that separates the bike lane from the from the long whatever. Right from the improvement, correct? It's not like yeah. a a sidewalk. It's more of a curb. Right, yeah, that right. area. Um, that, yeah, that's a pull out. So 18 inches, um, okay. included as a splash zone. And also if someone kind of gets somehow stuck in that no man's land, they have a way that they can get over to the side, but it's not designated as a walkway. Great. Okay. Do you have any other questions? Uh, yeah, just real quick. Um, because we have a, a, a basement, uh, in our house that's like along the Lowell street side just planning for, you know, hoping for the best. And, and I know we, we're not in a flood prone area, but, but would there be any seepage down into like our basement of moisture? I would say there's much, or, much less of a chance um, 
after this now because a lot of these flows are going to go straight to the storm system as opposed to okay. flowing kind of directly adjacent to your property. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, great. Cool. I think those are all of our questions. Thank you. Thank you. We really appreciate the, the redesign. Thank you so much. Yeah. Very welcome. Mark, there is a question in the chat about how long the project might take to put in. Gotcha. Um, so while we can't obviously tell a contractor exactly, you know, how long or it's going to take, uh, we estimate it'll take six to nine months. So start in the spring of 2025 and wrap up fall of 2025 is the best guess without knowing, you know, exactly what a contractor will say. Sam, you got something? Uh, you're muted. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to add to that um, a little bit. And, you know, there's another, um, you know, green infrastructure project that we're going to be packaging this with. So there's like, in a sense, that construction contract's going to, you know, contain two locations. And, um, you know, they, you know, depending on where they decide to start, you know, they might start with this one. They might start out at uh, 51st and Steel. So um, I think that kind of factors into that as well. But I, I would like to think as far as this particular site from the time that contractors show up to start work and mobilizing, um, they should be able to get this done in about six months, I would think. Yeah, it's a good 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 point, Sam. Um, just in case anyone could not hear that, this is packaged with this a second um, green infrastructure project in a different location. So if they start, if the contractor starts at the other location first, it just might hold up the start of this date a little bit. I do want to share a comment in this in the chat, which is, if we bake them cookies, will they start here first? <laughs> <laughs> you might you might want them to start there second. You know, I don't, I don't know. You might want them to start their second. So they have to, you know, they got a back end that they have to get out for. So, I mean, cookies would work on me. I just can't talk for them. We have exhausted the questions in the chat. Um, certainly if there are folks who have additional questions that they'd like to ask live. Go ahead and let us know. Um, I actually have one more question and it's related to uh, the bus stop. So at the moment, um, the bus stop is along the Evans side, but with the with the heat, we've had more people sitting actually in your in your current design, uh, kind of showing, uh, I guess, at that corner facing facing down Evans uh, toward the west. So like where you have um, yeah, like in that area, people just kind of waiting on our on our flagstone for the bus because they have good visibility, but they also have shade. Yep, sitting, you know, just on our on our side of the property, but but there. Um, and so I don't know if we could put, uh, you know, I think at the bus stop we need some sort of maybe a bus stop at the bench or a bench at the bus stop or maybe a bench there for the bus. I'm not sure, but that's just I think something for the the department to keep in mind is that. Um, the that we just don't really have a bench and so it does affect um people uh utilizing our our property or space on our property so if i don't know if that is a site improvement that could either be rolled into that uh curb improvement or if that could just be something that's added later to closer to the bus stop but that's just something to keep in mind you don't know if rtd does it or what does oh, sure yeah not sure if that's y'all or or rtd but just something i guess to keep in mind Good yeah, point. we can we can evaluate that. We 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 did talk a little bit about that, and if that's of interest to you, we can definitely evaluate that. We we weren't sure if you you know wanted to encourage if they're I guess if they're they're hanging out at the bus stop anyway, right? So we weren't sure if you wanted to invite people to sit right there or not. But it sounds like maybe if there's a a bench outside the property line in the right of way near the bus stop, that could be beneficial. 
Yeah, we can definitely look at that. Uh, yeah, that would be great because people will sit there regardless of whether there's a bench or not. So it would be great if if we could just give them a designated. Understood. Well, we really appreciate everybody being here tonight. Did I, Rosaria, am I missing? Are you talking with a question? And Amelia? Oh, no, we were just, we were just saying that they're, uh, we we're just saying that they're already, yeah, we we're just talking about how they're already sitting on our retaining wall, so. Yeah, well, especially because, I, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, we have the retaining wall along the Evans Street side and then the Lowell Street side. And um, yeah. Uh, we've had, I mean, we've had uh, to repair the wall because uh, it gets used so much that mm -hmm. it would be great if if somebody else would provide, you know, seats so people don't, you know, mm -hmm. don't sit on our mm -hmm. flagstone mm -hmm. wall. Yeah, rocks. You I don't blame them. Their shades. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's hot. Yeah, <laughs> rocks has a raised hand. Um, I. I just think this is going to be really nice. I just lived down the street. I just walked over before the meeting. And uh, <clears throat> the big the big thing that gets me being just a block off is the, the speeding up and down Lowell. So I'm hoping somehow this maybe will make people realize that they're in a, in a neighborhood. Maybe they could slow down. It's hard to say, but it'll be interesting to see. There, there are some studies that tree corridors like this do get people to slow down. Um, you know, so we hope so. We we think so. That I don't know. That there might be a lot of traffic to try to change the behavior of and years of uh, you know driving patterns, but we hope so. If I could add, Colin, uh, I think it's always been very confusing for people with that sort of asphalt triangle there, uh, particularly if you're headed westbound on Warren and you want to go north on Lowell, where would you turn? I know that the city put a little island out. Uh, I'm pointing as though everybody can see where I'm pointing. At the corner of Warren and, and Lowell, uh, and we put a stop sign out there. You can see it, you can see it right there. Uh, but I think a lot of people still come straight from the alley, where the alley is between Lowell and at Lindley, and, and use that triangle as extra space to come out. And it's very, very... Uh, hazardous for people who are coming around the bend on Lowell northbound. So I think, uh, rocks from that standpoint, this will be this will at least improve that one element that adds to the dangerous conditions here, as well that, as that, narrowing. Yeah, that is a confusing area because when I come off Lindley and I go out to the stop sign here, and then there's somebody cutting here. And when I first moved here three years ago, it was like, whoa, wait, am I in the wrong lane or right? Yeah. The other thing I would like to see is some kind of walkway from that where that little out inlet is there where the stop sign is across Lowell, just which might just come into play because there'll be a park there. So it might just become natural to have a walkway there. But um, it is just outside of our plans, but there is a curb ramp just to the left here that's existing that we will be redoing as part of this project and it crosses oh, cool. this is a little driveway cut but that other receiving curb ramp is just out of view here good good that's good those are important having friends that are using um, wheelchairs absolutely i just hope it doesn't flood down on you rosario and amelia <laughs> No, <laughs> no, the, the design, I mean, uh, I think it's a, you know, the design uh, will perfectly prevent um, exactly that. So we feel we feel better about that. Yeah, otherwise I'll build an adobe wall. Yeah, yeah, we'll just build another retaining wall. We'll build a moat. We'll figure it out. We'll do it in the neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, thank you. We'll turn it into public art or something. <laughs> Well, this has been a terrific conversation. Um, I hope everybody has had their questions answered. Um, more to come as this project moves into construction. We'll continue to communicate with you.
as we move into that phase. Um, are there any closing comments from the team or from Councilman Flynn before we break for the night? Well, for my part, I just want to thank you all for, I think, authentically listening uh, to the concerns uh, primarily of the of Rosario, who's lived there for some time and who's particularly impacted by this. And I'm happy that we've gotten to a point where there might be a few remaining uh, concerns, but I think the major ones uh, have been taken care of and maybe some of the other ones, Rosario, I can help you with, uh, particularly with the, uh, the, the vehicles that continue to park there. Great, thank you. Thank you all for coming and yes, yeah, Cedabaca family. I'm, I'm very happy that you guys are feeling better about this uh, configuration now, truly. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's great work. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks for spending your time with us tonight. And that concludes the presentation for this evening. Thank you. Thanks. Great. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you. Bye.